Hello everyone and welcome to the Adobe APAC live stream. My name is Paul Burnett. I'm the principal evangelist um, for Creative Cloud in Asia Pacific. I'm super excited today because we have a very special guest um, with us, an absolutely incredible illustrator and Photoshop artist. Um, I'd like to welcome Jeremy Lord. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> cool. So, Jeremy, can you just um, tell us, first of all, a little bit about your background? Sure. Uh, so I'm, um, I'm an illustrator, um, freelance illustrator, which means I, sort of, I work commercially as well as on um, various personal projects. Um, I'm classically trained, which means I can, I can do analog, but I've, I'm primarily focused on digital to use sort of commercial restraints and also personal um, to just what what I prefer working on, yeah. Cool. And you studied in? I studied in Paris, so I'm half French. <laughs> okay, cool. Which you cannot tell from the accent. No, that's no, awesome. No. So, Jeremy, apart from freelance work, you also um, work on, for a number of sort of ma pretty major ca clients. And one of those um, was actually Microsoft Xbox. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so. Um, that's, as a freelancer, I think it's one of the, the pleasures of being able to, to work with great clients. Uh, and the work that's um, behind us at the moment is a project that I did in collaboration with them. So Microsoft um, lent me this machine, which is the Surface Studio. Um, and as a, sort of a, as a result of that, I thought I should do work that they could actually use. Um, and so I made this piece around Xbox. I'm a bit of a gaming fan as well. Sure. Um, so I thought, you know, I'll, I'll have fun with this and, and do something they can use. Um, I made the piece, sent it over to, to Microsoft and said, do you guys want to use it? Um, and they said, yeah. So it's a, a bit of a backwards way of getting a brief in right, a sense yeah, of like okay. doing the work before there's any very any attention of actually getting work done. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, a, it's a, sort of a good example as well of, of do the work you want to be asked to do, I think, um, which is a, a, a good sort of tip, I think, sure. to, to anybody. So out you do there. a lot of personal work as well. Yeah in yeah. order to do that, yeah. Okay, cool. So, folks, today Jeremy's going to share with us um, a whole bunch of tips and tricks. He's going to actually work on a project um, for us and show us his workflow and a whole a whole bunch of things. Just um, for you, there is a chat pod below. If you've got any questions you want me to throw to Jeremy, please type them in the chat pod. We've also got a couple of um, competitions today. One of them is actually going to be during the show, and I'll get to that a little bit later. But the other one is if after today you would like to create a piece of artwork, a character, um, in the style that Jeremy does, which we'll talk about in a moment, and upload it to Behance, tag it, which we'll put the details uh, are on the screen for you to be able to, to go and enter, um, and you will win uh, a signed print of one of Jeremy's work. So pretty, pretty cool. But Tell us about the project you're going to work on today. Cool. So, um, so today I'm going to go through this uh, collaboration piece that I did with uh, an amazing analog artist called Ven Vanessa Vanderhaven. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, the idea behind this is is kind of stepping out of your comfort zone. How do you um, take a workflow that you're so used to working with and adapt it to someone else's workflow, someone else's style? Uh, and so the, the genesis behind this is Vanessa's work, as you can see, is um, A, really amazing, but also very sort of pencil and paper based, mm, sure. um, whereas mine is completely digital. So how do we take these kind of two seemingly opposite styles and, and smash them together? And then also in a thematic sense, my themes are generally sort of revolving around more sort of Japanese um, cues, whereas um, this um, drawing that uh, Vanessa did of Margaret Zhang, obviously Margaret Zhang is of a Chinese background, mm -hmm. so I couldn't work with that there. So sure, I've had to kind of sure. bend a little bit mm -hmm. to, to, to work with this. So I'm just going to take you guys through the process um, and a step-by-step -step of how to kind of work this up. So as you get started on that, can you tell us a little bit about your style, which you've, you've developed over time. Yeah, so um, my style is this kind of uh, mashup of all the things that I liked growing up, which is sort of 80s, manga, Japanese <laughs> influence, a bit of sort of skateboarding as well in there. Um, and it's literally just me sort of going, how do I, you know, put everything I like in one page yeah, and sort okay. of see what the result is. So lots of neon, lots of bright colors, lots of sort of 80s cues. So you're going to take cues. this pencil and paper sketch and head it in that direction. Yeah, yeah, just, and, and your touch just to not it. Japanese. Definitely okay, 80s, with the but Chinese. yeah, okay, a little okay, bit okay. of bit of more Chinese kind of side. So um, what I've done so far on this is, um, this is Vanessa's sketch that she has scanned in. Um, and I've brought it in to um, my document in Photoshop. So this is literally just me um, dropping in her sketch. And I'll work 
around it and behind it and a little bit over it as well, just to, just to make sure it blends in quite well. So the first thing with this is when you're working with a sketch, which I do sometimes do, sometimes I will do a pencil sketch and then right. um, scan it in and bring it in. Often I will also just jump straight into Photoshop and do the sketch there. Um, but for those of you kind of looking on sort of tips on how to take a pencil drawing and color it up and edit it and all that, um, essentially, this is a scan. You can kind of see a little bit, there's paper around it. There's a little bit of a darker edge around it. So I'm just going to drop this in and I'm going to hit uh, Command L or Control L, depending on what kind of computer you're on. And I'm going to bring up this levels here. And I'm just going to tweak the levels, boost the whites a little bit, just to get rid of that edge, which you can see here. If I bring it down, you can really see that edge come up. Um, so I'm just going to bring this up and boost the contrast a little bit because we, we don't want to lose her work at all. So in a, in a kind of a happy spot right there, just so we're losing that. So the next step for me is going to be to paint behind this. So I'm going to put this on um, what's called blending options. Where it says normal, I'm just going to pop it on to what's called multiply. I'll just hide the layer that's behind it. And what that's going to allow me to do essentially is paint behind this without losing any of the work that Vanessa's done. So it's going to allow me to apply color here without sort of losing any of that drawing, which is something that's going to be really handy. And it's the basis of um, working with any kind of sketch and drawing. Put it on a multiply layer and then paint underneath it a little bit as if it was on tracing paper. Cool. So just to let you know as well, um, a quick hello to Peter Bryans. We, you've got year nine and 11 design students from WA watching oh, cool. as well. So Hi guys. welcome to you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so at this stage, I've, I've dropped my, my drawing in here. I'm ready to start going on sort of my end of the collaboration. Mm -hmm. So the, the first bit is um, I generally work with kind of a, a blue pencil. It's pretty standard. It's one of those old animation things. Um, do a sketch with a blue pencil because it won't show up on the, on the black and white line tester, but it's just a nice mm -hmm. kind of color differentiation to work with. Um, and literally just using the basic um, Photoshop hard edge round brush with pressure sensitivity options turned on so that I get this kind of soft, thin line, depending on how sort of hard I'm pressing down. Do you ever use custom brushes or create your own brushes? No, not really. Mm -hmm. uh, a, lot of our, a lot of artists and illustrators do. Um, my, I tend to try and just sort of do it all with the, the basic tools there. Um, so at this stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sort of um, thinking about how can I give her a little bit of attitude. She's got a bit of a head tilt there. She's kind of looking down. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a sort of a, a bit of sass and attitude going on in the pose. So how do I sort of incorporate a body here that's going to do that? Um, and I'll, I'll just keep it super loose. So I'll, I'll generally start with kind of angles of the shoulders and the hips, which will give me the angle of the spine. And then I'll just really work simple sort of blocky shapes and so work the rib cage in. Um, get the hips in and then get legs and really just kind of stick figure at this stage. There's not mm -hmm. a lot of detail going on um, because I'm more concerned about getting the proportions right. So I don't want to go too far at this stage with anything. So I'm just going to give her this kind of like hand on the hip, holding a staff kind of weapon um, and see how that goes. And so I'm happy with that. Generally speaking, when I'm doing this, um, outside of this in my own kind of time. I'll probably try a few different things before I'm happy with something. But Do you have a, a, a finished idea in your mind before you start or, or is it uh, I've got a loose idea in a, in a sense. It's a little bit kind of like to use a cooking analogy. Like I, I'll know that I want Italian, but mm -hmm. I don't know if it's pizza, right. pasta, sure, salad sure. Okay. or anything like that. But there's a loose idea okay. there. But I, I tend to kind of let the work evolve a little bit, which mm -hmm. can be one of the bonuses of working on, on personal projects. So. Um, yeah, like at, at this stage, you can see I'm, I'm really just making sort of simple blocky shapes because I don't want to commit too much to anything at this stage because then the temptation is for me to keep it. And if I've made any mistakes, like for instance, I'm realizing that her torso is way too long at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, if you've advanced too far and added a lot of detail, the, you're going to be reluctant to change that and make it right. Um, and it's something that we refer to um, as artists. It's called murdering your darlings. Right, yeah, so you're, yeah. you're, this is now your darling because you spend some time on it and it's very detailed and you're super happy with it. So deleting it is going to hurt your soul a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to because it's not, it's not working. So you have to get the foundation of it right. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just getting the sort of basic stick figure foundation of the pose right before I start sort of dressing it up and adding detail. If the foundation isn't good, the whole thing won't work. And okay. you'll only realize that later on when you've got yeah. more to undo yeah. and it's just a you've bit of a waste of time. Down the track. So yeah, yeah. At, at this stage, 
Um, I'll start sort of working up a little bit um, like this. And um, hands can be a bit of a struggle, so I will use reference. I, I have used reference in the, in the sketch that you're about to see. Um, but this will be me for the next sort of hour or so, depending on how long it takes me to get it right. Okay. Um, so question obvious from that. How, uh, an entire piece of work, how long would you normally spend? I'd say anywhere in between sort of 10 hours to 10 days. It, it mm -hmm. really depends on the work. Some, some pieces are just kind of come to me a little bit faster than others, and others oh, I, wow. I'll struggle with a little bit more. But okay. um, yeah, the, I won't sort of proceed past this stage until I'm happy with at least the basics of it, okay. um, which is what this next one is here. So this, again, like I said, this will be me sort of working up this, um, trying to get the main sort Getting of body structure. right. Yeah. Um, and this is that sort of process in its sort of final state. So this is mm -hmm. probably sort of about an hour or so after sort of starting point. I've got the hands down. I've used reference for this hand here. Um, this one I've just kind of tried to freehand. Using reference I think is a good thing. It's something that a lot of people are reluctant to do, but it's something mm -hmm. that's that's super handy if you need that to get it right, then okay. definitely do it. So I've got a few more questions for you. Um, one of them I think we'll come to later um, from Jane North is, is um, why Photoshop and Illustrator, but I think you're gonna talk about that in a little while. But yeah. um, one of the other questions, how did you first get work freelance? And the other question is, what's the glove you're wearing? Uh, so, okay. Uh, so the glove I'm wearing is is super straightforward, actually. Um, that because this is glass, because sort of you know hot, sort of muggy summers in Sydney, your hand can get a bit grippy. Mm -hmm. It just means that my hand can kind of slide around uh, sure. a little bit more, um, and it's, it's a bit of a Michael Jackson reference <laughs> as well. So that's kind of fun. Okay, cool. um, in terms of getting my first kind of freelance gig. Um, it's it, there's a bit of luck involved. In fact, there's probably a lot of luck involved, um, like most kind of industries, really. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just putting yourself out there, talking to the right people. Um, maybe as an illustrator, get yourself an agent, um, and to just cold call, cold call a lot of agencies. And as you said, in your personal work, do the work you want to get. Yeah, exactly. So if you if you're a fan of comic book art, don't go sort of making children's books and put those on your website and sort of think about what you want people to see you do, that, that that's what they'll ask sure. you to do. Um, sure. So at this stage, I'll, um, I'll start sort of putting clothing on her because the, the basis of it is is good. So I've made a new layer uh, and I've named it. Naming your layers is, a, is an important, it's a painful thing, but it's an important thing. Okay. Um, typically, I'll have anywhere in between sort of 10 to 60 layers. So you don't in do like copy, copy of layer 27? Yeah, no, <laughs> that's, that's no good, uh, especially when there's a lot of kind of smaller details. So it can be good to, to name your layers. I don't always do it, but it's, it is an important bit. So sure. I've, uh, I've changed colors. Uh, I've just gone for like a pink. Not, well, it is an 80s color, but it's not, that's not necessarily why. It's just sort of differentiating the, the sketch from my, my clothing color. And then it, really, it, it is very easy for me to kind of do this because the base of it is, is solid. It's literally just kind of tracing over and adding clothing on her. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where I'll start to kind of mess around a little bit. So. Um, I might sort of start, you know, varying amounts of sort of Chinese references that are in here and start thinking about sort of giving her a collar and just mess around with sort of different ideas and where's it going, how do we do this, which is why, again, um, with your previous question of do I have a clear idea in my head, not necessarily, but it's a, it's a fun thing kind of discovering the piece mm -hmm. as it's going along. Um, so, again, this will be me just kind of messing around a little bit for, for the next little while, just playing with different ideas. Um, and then what I've ended up with is is this kind of final stage here, which is after maybe about an hour or so of me working, trying to figure out, I've given her a super 80s blazer, sleeves rolled up okay. as you do, yeah. Yeah. Um, little kind of knotted t-shirt, make it a little bit sexy, um, and just kind of like leather pants, a little bit sort of thriller style. Um, yeah. So. I'm just going to jump in here with um, another competition that I mentioned before. So you've you've got her there with a t-shirt on. Yep. So what we'd like you to do is if you want to play um, at home or at work or wherever you are, if you would like to create um, a logo, and I'll get um, Jeremy to give you a little bit of art direction in a moment. If you'd like to create a logo, upload it to Behance and in the chat pod put the link to that artwork. So upload to Behance, send us a link. Um, then we're going to show those to Jeremy a little bit later on, and you might grab one of those and put it um, on, on the website. A little bit of art direction for them. Yeah, so basically, um, this is sort of very 80s themed at this stage. So thinking about sort of what could go on to an, a t-shirt from the 80s. Some kind of like, you know, palm trees okay. and sunsets and Lamborghinis and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so yeah. something along those lines. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so 
Again, at this stage, the, the, the clothing is set. We're, we're kind of ready to roll on one of the phases that's probably going to take me the longest, which is the digital inking. Um, and this is um, me going to be kind of taking my time, spending a little bit of time on this to really get the line right. And with, um, with the question that came up earlier as to Photoshop versus Illustrator, this is where that's going to be um, the thing that gets me. So my, the, work, the lines that I like to do uh, are generally very kind of smooth, buttery, very clean, flat lines. Mm -hmm. um, things like, like this kind of thing where you just get this nice, smooth, flowing line okay. with, a, with a sort of tapered yep. edge at the end um, and just solid color. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time getting this down. So Illustrator would be smarter and more efficient for me to work in because it allows me to get the line down and maybe if it's not right the first time around I can edit it. Mm -hmm. um, being vector, it's super clean, super sharp. But again, that's this idea of kind of working freehand. There, there's there's an idea of process for me. It's not about the des it's not about the the destination. It's about the journey. Right. Okay. Um, and the process it needs to be fun for me. Otherwise, it won't sort of be conducive to me doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that sense, what I like to do here is I like to just take my time and get those lines right. Really feel like I'm, you know carving these lines out, getting them right, working them up. And if it means, you know, undoing them because they're, nope, that's not the right curve because I'm trying to get it right in one go, whereas Illustrator will allow me to just do it and then Adjusting, make it yeah, better. Sure. Um, so not the most efficient way to work, but the most pleasant way for me to work. And really just kind of that sense of achievement of like, yeah, I'm doing it the hard way, but I'm really happy when it's like, so anything it just works wrong out. with people doing it in Illustrator? No, it's just no, a not at all. Taste? Absolutely. I think what the the work that you like to do is the process that you like to follow is what you should do sure. and if you're happy with the work at the end who's to say that you did it the wrong way mm -hmm. um so and, and again the people who you're going to show it to are only going to see the finished piece right, but for yeah. you as an artist there's a it's sense the of process. process it needs yeah. to be enjoyable cool. um, and for me this sense of getting getting those i'm a sucker for a nice curve getting it nice and smooth mm -hmm. and so i use the the smoothing option here in photoshop which just makes your line sort of go from this sort of too many coffees at 5 a.m. <laughs> to something really smooth and clean. Okay. Um, and so I'll, I'll spend a lot of time doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that takes us to kind of the, the next phase, which is this, um, the digital inking is now finished. Right. Right? I've got the sketch underneath. I've got all the lines exactly how I want them. I've taken a little bit of time to sort of craft them and get them right. Mm -hmm. um, and what's this, what this is going to do is, first of all, it sort of creates a, a good amount of contrast. But when I move on to the next side of this, which is going to be putting color in, it's really going to help me out with um, getting nice, clean shapes because I've got these nice, big, thick black outlines for me to kind of mess around inside of. Cool. Right. Okay. So this, so now it's a bit clearer now where the T-shirt is. So this is where we're asking people if they've got a logo, if they up, upload it to Behance yep. as a PNG would be handy. Yeah. So something without a background, so ideally PNG, PNG or PSD. Right. Um, okay. Something that I can sort of just drop the illustration in there without having the white of the page around it. Okay. And we've got a, a, a question from Darlene. Mm -hmm. um, what's the tablet you're working on? Uh, so this is a, a Microsoft Surface Studio. Um, it's just a touchscreen computer, 28 inch, something that I really like to work with. Um, but um, yeah, but some, you know, something, it's, it's important to have nice tools, I think, so yeah. Cool. All right, so again, uh, at this stage, this is probably, at this stage we've probably done sort of, I don't know, five, six hours worth of work, depending on how many times I've gone back on my concept mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. idea. Um, now I'll start sort of adding color. And this is a pretty straightforward process for mm -hmm. me where I'll just be using the lasso tool here. So the basic lasso tool, which allows me to kind of draw a selection mm -hmm. and then fill that. And that's literally what I will be doing. But before I get started, I'm going to make a new group and call that colors. Uh, because all my colors are going to go in here in one layer group. And that's going to be important later on when I start talking about shading. Um, but I'm just going to pop layers in here, and this one is going to be the color for the blazer. So I'll call this blazer 
It's mm-hmm. pretty straightforward. And I will literally make this selection in here. And you'll see that because I've got a thick line, if I start to sort of mess around within that line, if it's a little bit shaky, it won't really matter that it is that because I've got these nice thick black outlines. Mm-hmm. So I've so got a bit of room for error. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Um, and that obviously that's important for it to then be behind that layer in my hierarchy. But I'm just going to sort of make a selection, pick a color. It doesn't really matter what kind of color at this stage because I'll edit this later on. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to use uh, keyboard shortcuts to fill with different colors. So I've got a, a foreground color and a background color. Um, and rather than go up to the, the edit menu, go fill, go through all that process, when you're in the kind of the thick of it, you want to just kind of speed it up That's a little something. bit. Yep. Um, so I'm going to use the, the shortcuts here to, to fill with background and foreground colors. And the foreground color fill is Option or Alt backspace, and that'll fill with that. Mm-hmm. And then Control or Command backspace to fill with my background color. Right. Okay. And, and that's that's going to be me for a little while now. And then Command D to deselect, and just keep sort of working up these selections, filling them with colors, moving on to the next bit. How how much I will make is pretty arbitrary, really. Sort of. Well, I'd sort of try and do it all in one go and make a selection. That that might be a little bit sort of counterproductive because if I mess up, I can still edit it. But I, I do feel sometimes like you know maybe don't sort of push your luck too much and just fill one bit. Um, I could do it with the paintbrush mm-hmm. as well. So I could go in with my basic paintbrush here and start oh, sort start of painting it, yeah. it in. And again, because I'm I'm working with these thick black outlines, it doesn't matter if I'm not being super clean. So if I turn those outlines off, you can see that it's not right. crazy yeah, it's clean. It's not so clean, but with the black lines. So talking about that again with the layers that you're creating, we've got another question um, online. Do you, as you're working, do you create a whole bunch of files as you're going, like different stages, or do you work all within the one no, file? Yeah. And so therefore, how do you use the layers um, for that? Um, so that's a good question, actually, because it, it, sometimes it can be a bit of a balancing act. Mm-hmm. It, too many layers can be a little bit counterproductive, but then not enough layers means that sort of editing it, um, making changes can be very difficult. Sure, so sure. if, for instance, my my outline and my blazer were all on the same layer. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to change the color of the outline, I'd have to then make a selection. It becomes a little bit harder. So right. isolating things on separate layers means you can edit it. But then, if I was to say, you know, put the sleeves on a separate layer and then the lapels on a different layer, that, that maybe starts to get a little bit too complicated for right. me to make those changes. Okay. Cool. Um, so yes, yeah, so I could use the brush, but I'll, I'll just sort of speed it up by by using the the selection tool, mm-hmm. um, and then. Let's make a new layer. I'll make the the T-shirt. And we'll start sort of looking at other options for me to do this. So at this stage, I I haven't been really too fussed about what colors I'm using, because I'll just change them later on. Some people like to um, create a color palette before they start. Um, And it's kind of what you were asking me before with, you know, do you have an idea in your Mm -hmm. mind as to what you want to do? I just know that it needs to be 80s. Um, After that, it could be a whole bunch of different things. So I will tend to just pop colors in as a sort of a, almost like a placeholder and then use the um, command U or, com- or control U to bring up the hue saturation panel. Uh, and this is where I'll work sort of live and just use this slider to stop on a color that I like and just think, you know, okay, um, that's a nice kind of color. Maybe it needs to be a little bit more sort of mauve kind of 80s desaturated mm-hmm. pastel colors. Um, and then the blazer can can have a go as well, and start thinking about you know what what works here. What are some of the surprising colors that I might not necessarily think of off the on the on the fly, but I can just kind of gradually get to and, and stop the slider when I'm like, yeah, that that's nice. I'm I'm feeling that. So. That's good. So that's that's something that I will spend a lot of time okay. on. Okay. So this again is where your your layers are coming in handy again, yeah. where you choose where you where you're putting those. So the difference if you're working in Illustrator. Uh, the difference if I'm working in Illustrator. Illustrator does have a recolor artwork tool, mm-hmm. which is powerful in different ways, mm-hmm. but it's not as immediate and live as Photoshop is. It's a much sure. more kind of you need to pick the color. You can't sort of slide it around. Adjust the hue saturation. I'm yeah, kind of guessing the color. I don't really know what I'm doing, but okay. that's fine. Um, so yeah, so again, I will just literally spend a bit of time on sort of filling all these colors, um, playing around with the hue saturation individually until I'm sort of happy with an overall ensemble. Um, the skin will have a color, the pants will have a color, her nail polish, all these kind of things. How do I work all that up? 
Okay, so also at the moment you've started to overlap some of the the original illustration a little bit. How, yeah. how do you do with that? So this is going to be one of the challenges for me in this sense because I obviously work with these thick black outlines, but I don't have that here. I've got these sort of very textural, you know, gradient tonal lines. So I'm going to have to cheat a little bit here and do something that I wouldn't necessarily do, which is use uh, a little bit of opacity to um, mask this out essentially. So I'm going to place a layer mask on this one and I'm just going to mask it out like this and try and get the same sort of light and dark kind of thing happening on the hair and I'm just going to have to redraw over the hair and mask it out which can be successful but sometimes can also look a little bit kind of cut out mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. too much so there's a, there's a balance to be struck here and that, that was one of the challenges of this collaboration right. as well is okay. trying to get these edges where the digital and the analog are going to touch each other physically how does how do they blend into each other on that border mm -hmm. um, and that that was the way that I kind of decided to do this and just really get that texture of the hair in there over the line work over the colors cool okay so again a few hours of me kind of working on this, playing around with different colors. Uh, I'm a bit of a sucker for colors. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to just quickly outline those steps, the major steps you've done so far. Yep. So the first one was basically getting a bit of a structure to the body. Yeah, so it's it's this kind of step of, of getting your outline right, um, getting it to a, a space where, you, where you're happy with it. Okay, so once you've got the structure, clothing was next, yeah? Yeah, so clothing goes on next um, and you know, playing around with ideas. This is where some of the themes can come in and, and play around a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but building that on the solid basis of, of the body that you've created. Cool. Okay. And that's then you started to to and then yeah, the sort of create nice clean inking, digital inking on this so that I can oh. start to put my colours in. Out of those three stages so far, which is the one you spend the most time on? Um, probably the digital inking, mm -hmm. simply because it, it takes me a finish. few goes to get the, the yeah. good line down. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, depending on the pose that I'm doing, maybe the first stage, if it's a very complicated sort of pose with foreshortening or something okay. where there's a weird angle going on, okay. it, it might sort of take me a little while to get it looking like it's not too distorted. Right. Um, but generally speaking, it's it's this inking stage. That and I'll, so I'll still in that, on. and when you're doing that structure, original structure one, you often use reference images. Yeah, you, yeah. You yeah. Take pictures, take photos. Yeah. So stuff. I um, for for this one, for instance, I used um, this photo that I took of my girlfriend's hand, um, and used that as reference to oh, to work okay. on it. So that I was really right. struggling with the position of that hand. I felt it felt like it was just kind of holding on a bit too tight. There wasn't enough character in sure. there. Um, so I, I went and got reference, but it's it's not something that I, I do too often. I like mm. to try and sort of get, get it right on my own yeah, first time, which is a little bit kind of <laughs> egocentric, okay. uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you don't even do tracing, though. You no, 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 always, no, no, no. Yeah, always sort of put it on the side there and kind of draw it right. and use Just it as a model. But okay, yeah, cool. tracing is is a little bit sort of uh, maybe a bit cheating. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, and then yeah, and then I'll start to sort of apply color into that, as I said really sort of working that up. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is the this is the kind of the, the next pe phase of this where I've, I've added all the color. I'm happy with where it's at. As you can see, I've kind of changed a few of the colors there. So her blazer's not pink anymore. I've added a stripe in here just, just because. So I'm not necessarily sort of too constricted to the whole 80s thing. Mm -hmm. um, as long as there's a few kind of ingredients in it that feel 80s, like her, her you know, super rad 80s sunnies here. Yep, awesome. Um, <laughs> that's, that's kind of going in there. And, and then the, the, the bangles and then the jacket and the t-shirt. Yeah. So there's enough there that I'm happy with. It's kind of like, yeah, I've, I've, I've nodded to the 80s enough here. I'm just going to jump in again. We've got a few questions from online and they're all, all very similar questions from a few people there. Um, basically things like um, image size, resolution, what's your output that you, you're doing, the file sizes that you're working on, yeah. etc. So uh, again, when I'm working commercially, so for a client, that's dictated to by the client and what, and what they need. Um, usually for my personal work, I like to work at least at A2. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it'll become a print, maybe it'll become a t-shirt, because I'm working in Photoshop and because it's bitmap, not vector, it's not scalable. Right. So I like okay. to go a little bit bigger than I really okay. think that I'll need. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I always work in RGB uh, because those neon colors, RGB has got a bigger color gamut sure. than CMYK. So mm -hmm. the, the tradition is CMYK for print and RGB for screen, but um, the printer that I use um, is so awesome. A guy called Robert Wade, he gets all my colors down right and it really gets those vibrant sort of neon colors and that needs to be an RGB file. Right. Okay. Okay, cool. 
Um, so yeah, so again, at this stage, this is um, this is the piece that we were kind of fully colored. Um, I've left the t-shirt white as, as a kind of, because the colors work a little bit better, but it might also make it a little bit easier to kind of pop anything on there because it's a neutral color. So just a reminder, if you've, if you've got an image or you created an image uh, logo for the t-shirt, upload it to Behance, send us the link, um, and we'll get that to Jeremy shortly so that he can use it. Yep. Um, okay, so at this stage I'm ready, to, I've got flat colors, uh, and perhaps the artwork's maybe needing a little bit more volume, a little bit of light. Um, again, I like to work with those kind of neon themes. So um, Vanessa's drawing has already kind of dictated to me where the light needs to come from. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to add some shading in here. And what I will do is essentially working underneath my outline layer, which is these kind of thick black outlines, I will just create a new layer, call it um, neons, and start with the light source rather than a, uh, a shadow. So I like to sort of work with light and then put shadows in accordingly. But what I will do is, again, very similar kind of process. I'll just use my brush on a smoothing um, setting and just get these neon highlights in there, trying to think about how the folds would hook onto the light, where the light would go, where would it not go, how the shading would work. Um, unfortunately, there's no reference that I can use here, mm -hmm. um, simply because, I mean, I, I, it's possible, but it would take a lot of work. I'd have to find exactly the same clothing, dress somebody in them, find a blue light, and then get everything. that. Yeah. Exactly. So okay. it's a lot of work. So there's a bit of figuring out here for me to do, which, again, is something that I, I do enjoy doing, a bit of trial and error. Um, and then that sort of feeling of, you know, you nailed it when you get it right. Mm. Um, it's something that can be really cool. So, again... Just kind of working those those highlights in, giving it a little bit of attitude, a little bit of pop, a little bit of kind of neon. Um, and then next stage is for me to um, put some shading in here. So what I will do is I'll pop these all into a group. So you can see here my colors mm -hmm. are all in this um, layer group, so I've named them all. I've got a color for her staff, the pants are a color, the skin, etc. Okay. Um, and that's really crucial because I'm going to apply a shadow to all of these layers at the same time. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to do what's called an adjustment layer. So this little icon down here, this sort of half cut circle, black and white, I'll just click on that whilst I've got my group selected and I'll go to hue saturation. And this is the same um, slider that we had before when we were tweaking our colors. And I will literally just drop the lightness of this down a little bit and just give it a little bit of shading. But you can see that it's done it to the white of the paper as well. Mm -hmm. So that's not ideal. I might also just kind of tweak the colors a little bit because shading, like shadows aren't black. They always have a little bit of color in them. So sure. just, to, just something to just make it a little bit more interesting than just a darker version of that color. It's actually got color in the shading as okay. well. Um, and what I will do to make it just go onto that is in my hue saturation panel, I've got this little icon here, which I'll click on and it'll just affect the layer group underneath. Yeah. Yep. Right. So if those layers were separate, it would only do it to the layer that's immediately underneath it. Mm -hmm. So having them in a group means that it does it collectively it to, to everything. Group. Sure. Um, and then you'll see as well that it's put a, a very handy layer mask on this. So what that's going to allow me to do is to paint some shading back into this, working with my brush, I can literally paint the shadows in. So you can see that kind of happening here. I might just increase the darkness of it so we can kind of see it a little bit more. I probably wouldn't leave it this dark, but mm -hmm. just for the sake of, kind of seeing the highlights come back in, it's literally just me taking my time and sort of finding the shading and getting that to kind of match up to where the... So your brush setting lights. again, still on smoothing, still yep, on Yeah, still brush, on yep. smoothing mm -hmm. because it, I, I'm really sort of keen on, on getting those nice sort of smooth, even lines. Um, and sometimes I will actually work with a lasso tool when I've got a big sort of area to fill, something like this. I will actually work with that. Um, but generally speaking, this is where I'd, I'd really just work with the brush and just kind of work in those details, try and figure out how the light's hitting it, where it's going. Um, and then I'm, I'm faced with another challenge here from this collaboration, which is Vanessa's already put shading on this, and mm -hmm. it's um, very soft kind of textured pencil shading, as I, as I said. So working shading all the way up to the neck in this one is 
going to be quite difficult because I'm always going to get this effect happening where it's never going to be smooth. I'm always going to have this awkward transition from my flat shading to her textured yep. shading. Yep. So where sort of in a physical sense, the light would actually be kind of reaching around here. I've had to cheat a little bit on this one and just find a way that this whole area here doesn't actually have shading when it actually should. So that's been a little bit tricky. And so what okay. I've done is just shading on the T-shirt and sort of the shading of the blazer on the actual T-shirt itself. So it's just a kind of another example of how that collaboration has kind of forced me to rethink how mm -hmm. I would normally work. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it's, and it's a good thing. I think, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone is, is something that is very sort of handy to do every now and then. It teaches you a lot. It sort of really makes you think. Um, and sometimes, you know, the, the, the process of it can teach you a lot and maybe open some doors for you to work like this in future as well. Right. Okay. So a lot of these stages that you've done take you a number of hours to do. Yeah. Pretty labor intensive process. Um, yeah. How do, are there steps that you you really enjoy doing? Other ones that you hate doing? Are there? Or, yeah, or you so just, it's all part of the. Uh, it's it's there's a, definitely a bit of love hate going on there. I think <laughs> where, as as much as I love working with colors, they're also a little bit painful because trying to get that right color, trying to sort of match it up. As soon as you change the color of the blazer, you need to change the color of the skin and all those kind of things. So, um, there's a bit of a sort of a Chinese puzzle of colors going on with this. Um, but I definitely say that the, the inking is one of the phases that I, I prefer doing the most. It's the most labor intensive for mm -hmm. me, but it's also one of the most pleasant ones where it really just gets this sense of the piece coming together and it's sort of set in stone now and I can move forward and it's a sense of accomplishment getting getting the right lines down. So yeah, definitely the, the inking process for me is, is one of the most enjoyable ones right, that I do. Okay. So again, just kind of taking my time, getting, getting where the light would hit, getting where it would not hit, trying to sort of create a little bit of volume here with this piece. Um, and as well, a, a little bit of attitude, a little bit of kind of contrast uh, and get those neons really popping as well. Because obviously for a neon to, to really stand out and pop, it requires nighttime, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so I, yeah. I need to sort of get really sort of dark contrasting shadows here for the neons to the really feel back, like yeah, they're okay. light. Standing um, yeah. That color on a white background would just not pop as much. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so again, just moving on to, to kind of the next phase um, whereby I've created all the shading that I like, all the shadows are kind of working out for me. Um, I've put her in a circle as well, as you can see. So I've, I've locked her in a circle. Something about sort of working in a circle for me that just kind of holds it all together, mm -hmm. just makes it more than just kind of like a flat character on a, on a page. Uh, and it also kind of fits the, the neon vibes as well. Um, so you can see here that what I've done, as well as adding shading, is I've actually put a shadow on her. And how I will do that, if you kind of look at this, is it's literally just all the colors that I've done and the drawing that I've done merged into one layer and then made as one color. Mm -hmm. And one of the really kind of cool ways of doing that is using this little kind of checkerboard up here on a layer which locks all the transparent pixels. Mm -hmm. So normally what you would do is you might sort of make a selection and try and sort of figure out how to do that. But that selection sometimes when it comes to you know very fine work like the hair can be a little bit tricky to get just right. Um, it can leave out a few pixels. So locking transparency on a layer means that I can just select a color and again use my um, command shortcuts, so um, option backspace, and fill mm -hmm. that. And it gets it exactly yeah, perfect can, how can, I need yeah. it. So cool. that's something that I've discovered actually quite recently and it's been super helpful for okay, me. Cool. So again, yeah, it's just a matter of um, bringing that in putting it behind, basically it's a drop shadow, but it, it just means that it just kind of adds in a little bit more volume. It separates it from the background mm -hmm. a little bit um, and makes it uh, pop a little bit more. Uh, and you can see as well that at this stage, what I've done, originally I've, I've got this circle that's kind of this size to, to lock her in. Um, and again, one of the things of this um, collaboration was 
if I kind of turn this layer mask off, you can really start to see that there's a lot of detail going on. Vanessa's drawing is starting to get lost. Right, yeah. Uh, and this is something that we I had a conversation with her and sort of sent her this for some feedback. It's kind of like working with a client, um, except a lot better because she's also an illustrator. <laughs> um, okay. And she said to me, you know, yeah, you're, my drawing's kind of getting a little bit lost in here. Can we, can we do something to make my drawing stand out a little bit? So I thought that... You know, despite me having sort of spent some time working on, on the pants, mm -hmm. it's not working again, murdering your darlings. Uh, and so I've just kind of cropped it in a little bit more and made sure that her drawing is a little bit bigger inside of this sort of illustration that, um, that mm -hmm. we're looking at, making it a little bit more prominent. Cool. So tell me um, for a moment, you talked before about doing a lot of personal work and a lot of client work. For you, what's the difference between the two? Um, so. There's a, there's a huge difference in between the two. I think uh, at least when you're when you're starting out, there's um, essentially client work tends to well doesn't tend to is always on a very tight brief. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you'll get clients who will just go, look, we need something along those lines. Surprise us. Mm -hmm. um, but more often than not, they have a very sort of specific tight brief that they need you to work to. Um, that are restraints from the clients and so on and so forth. So there's, there's always a little bit of, of give and take in terms of an idea when you're working with a client. And sometimes that means, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone. Sometimes that means doing work that you're not necessarily too pleased with. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you just kind of have to do it. it the, idea, the ideal sort of case scenario uh, for, for an illustrator is you've got this kind of duality in between the commercial work that you do and the personal work that you do. And the personal work that you do is where you can cut loose and kind of do the things that you're, you know, really answering to do um, and that your clients don't ask you to do. So ideally, the more of that you do, the, the more clients are going to identify you as doing that and give you that work. Um, this, and so the analogy that I always use is this kind of idea of like I've opened up a salad bar and I do have all the ingredients for a pizza, but I only want to make salads. But clients will still come to you and say, can you make us a pizza? And it's, I guess it's up to you in that sense to say yay or nay whether you want to do it. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people will just identify you as an illustrator and just say we need an illustration regardless of style. Uh, whereas working personally, you can just do whatever you want. Really. But you, as you were saying before, the more the more personal work you do and you get out there, the more likely you are if you do the work you want to want to be doing, the more likely you are to get asked to do that by yeah clients, absolutely yeah. i think if you if you're you know if your aspiration is to become a tattoo artist but all you're showing on your website or social media is you know watercolors and children's books you're going to be yeah. left wanting that kind of work so definitely yeah. do the work you want to be asked to do and show people that work because they're going to ask you to do it based on that um yeah so uh, coming back to this i think uh, at this stage we're sort of almost done. I'm adding in finishing touches, little details and so on. So I've um, I created a, um, a, an illustration here in Adobe Illustrator. It's this kind of Chinese circle symbol. And I've literally just brought that into um, Photoshop. And I'm going to start sort of playing around with colors here. And using my hue saturation, I'm going to hit colorize, lighten it up. And just, again, play around with, you know, what's working here. I quite like the blue, but then her skin is blue, her blaze is blue. Something needs to kind of contrast a little bit. So I think I'm feeling a little bit of a yellow, something like that. Mm -hmm. And and that's going to start to really kind of um, come together. And then you can see as well this kind of next phase. What I've um, gone in to do is I've actually created another asset in Illustrator because I was kind of trying to sort of play around with this and see what I could add to it, which is the, the blessing and the, the curse of working digitally mm -hmm. is when is a piece finished? You can always yes, add keep, to it. You can always going. do more stuff to it. Um, whereas in a sense, when you're working um, in a analog way, you're kind of bound by what, you know, how much paint can you realistically put on a canvas? How much time have you got on your hands? Um, and so on and so forth. So working with this, it, it can be quite tempting to go a little bit overboard and then you've got to sort of start to, to pare it back a little bit. So this is what I've done here and I've, I've made these kind of concentric circles to bring into my final illustration. 
and it just it started just getting way too much. It just starts getting really ridiculous. Um, I'm, I'm loving the colors, but it's yeah. just like no, come on, you can't you can't just do that all the way. Uh, again, you know what, what I was talking about before with this sense that Vanessa's drawing is starting to get lost. This is just adding more and more things that are going to distract from right. that. So it's yeah, it's sort of having that voice inside your head going like, "Stop! You, you're finished. It's done." Um, it can be something that's that's very valuable, um, and I think something that's really important as well, knowing when the piece is done and just yeah. that's it. Put it up online. Do you show your work to other other colleagues? Do you have other people that that you you trust to look at your work and give you directions, tell you when it's done? To yeah. Give so you um, ideas? absolutely. So my, my girlfriend is a web designer, so she's um, she's always a sort of a, a good place to start with. It's, you know, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Give me some tips. Um, especially on this piece, uh, I'm not exactly a fashion guru, so she sort of helped me out Actually sort of getting, cool. you know, like, no, Margaret Zhang would never wear that. And so there, there was a little bit of that as well, sort of thinking about, you know, is, is this something that Margaret Zhang would be happy with? Is this something that wow. she would be kind of, yeah, like, this is cool? Is um, and not necessarily saying that she was, you know, you know, change her style to 80s because <laughs> of this piece, but do something that would be kind of realistic for her. Um, but otherwise, things like, um, you know, like I've, I've got an Instagram account as well where and, and generally I sort of follow other illustrators and they follow me back. And so you start conversations like that when you so put up okay. a new piece, I'll put comments on it and you comment on theirs. And you get kind of a little bit of peer feedback that way as well, sure. which can be super handy. Okay. So I've also got a question um, from Fraser Halkins um, online. Are you self-taught in Photoshop? How do you learn new things in Photoshop? And we were also talking before about how much of Photoshop do you use? Yeah, so um, that's a good question. I, so I'm actually mostly self-taught in Photoshop, mm -hmm. which is a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, it's a good thing because everything that you learn yourself just sticks in your brain completely forever. Right. Uh, it's a bad thing because I only know what I need to know. Right. Okay. And sometimes there are things that I should know that I don't. Um, and so like you were showing me something before, um, with select subject, yeah, for instance, yeah. which is not necessarily a feature that I would use, but it's something that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and so being self-taught means that I, I don't even ever sort of try and learn anything new. Right. I know what I need to know to do yeah. what I want to do, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the limits of my of my work. But then I think there's this thing as well with, with Photoshop, and we talk about this with photographer friends as well, of this idea that they know a Photoshop that I don't. Mm, they know yeah. there's all these different panels and options and tools that I, I'm not even aware of because they use it for very different things. So I think it's a, it's a testament to the sort of the power of a program like Photoshop that it can cater to all these different sort of industries without any overlap. And, it, and it's funny because I'm, I normally work in Photoshop with digital imagery and I've learned things from you today, which I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know, yeah, which is cool. Yeah, and then again, sort of the, the power of sort of going online and sort of, you know, learning new things as you need to do them. Um, I've started putting a bit of animation into my pieces as well when I'm done. Just again, sort of, I don't want this to be finished. I want to keep working on it. So let's see what we can do with animated GIFs and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's opened a whole new door with After Effects and sort of how do I work in with that. Um, I do time lapses as well of, of okay. these, so there will be a time lapse going up of this oh, one as well, the, the full building. process. Sure. Um, obviously sped up because the full process took me sort of like 10 hours, so nobody okay. wants to sit through a 10 hour video. Um, but yeah, sort of learning how to kind of, you know, promote yourself and put your work out there and so on and so forth. It's a really big part, I think, of being a freelancer is doing the work, but then telling people about it. Okay. Now, I think I'm just going to check in a moment. Um, if we just wait a second, I'm just going to um, double check. I think we've got some um, entries into the um, thing, which we'll swap across in a minute, just not yet, while I work out whether I've got the right ones in here. We've had a couple of Behance entries. Um, and, oh, and in fact, we've also just had another question, which you can answer while I'm sorting this out. Um, have you ever thought about getting into motion graphics? Yes, actually, uh, I'm, I'm talking to um, a studio at the moment about sort of learning um, After Effects in a, in a good enough way that I could actually start doing that. So right. that's uh, definitely something that's on my mind about sort of thinking about how do I take my illustration to the kind of the next level. And motion graphics is something that's definitely uses a whole bunch of different disciplines at the same time and something mm -hmm. that I've, I've got a little bit of an animation background as well. I studied animation okay, cool. for a year. Yep. Uh, so it's something that's, that is kind of close to me as well. 
Okay. Now, I've, um, if we jump over to my screen, I've got, first of all, I'm going to start off. So if you guys don't know Behance, Behance is like the world's largest social network for creatives. So whether you're an illustrator, a photographer, a videographer, doesn't matter, um, putting your work on Behance, sharing it and getting um, material back. So this is actually at the moment I'm on Jeremy's um, Behance um, page. And also I'll jump out just to let you know, Jeremy also has his own website, jeremylord.com, um, if you yep. want to visit later um, and see some of his work or follow him on Behance, also on Instagram, yep. um, you mentioned. But we have a couple of entries here um, in the competition to put on the t-shirt so we're going to try and get those on the t-shirt okay. now so first of all um, this one from a Cindy Chen and apparently not the Cindy Chen who's sitting in front of me here in the studio but a different Cindy Chen bizarrely enough and also this one here um, from I think that's pronounced Jackie C so they should hopefully be up in your library now if you yep. want to refresh that and see if you've got those up in your library and we'll jump back over to they're coming up yet yeah it's just taking a sec okay they should uh hopefully upload into your library yeah, in a minute yeah. yeah here we go so up to you totally choose which one you okay well let's 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 give this one a shot and see how we go okay cool um so this one i might have to change the color of the t-shirt to to this background color because it's all on um, one layer but let's let's give this a shot and see how we go so I've just opened it up and I'm going to just bring it in here and there we go. So I just got to make sure that it's on the right layer. Let's rescale this, pop it in here um, and I'm just going to distort this a little bit. So I'm just using the, the mesh transform here to, to give her just that little bit of kind of distortion as if she was on the t-shirt just kind of following the folds a little bit um, so that'll that'll probably be as good as I kind of really need it to be here mm -hmm. uh, and then like I said I'm just gonna make the the t-shirt color this kind of background color so this is where again where I'll just go back down to my t-shirt color I've already got that lock transparency layer and so I'm literally just gonna command backspace and kind of grab that mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna pop a um, layer mask on this one to kind of Get it underneath the lapels of the t of the uh, blazer, sorry, mm -hmm. and then we should be good to go. And so one of the really nice things about adjustment layers as well is that you can see that the shading here has been applied to this new artwork as well. So it's kind of this. I, I don't need to redo my shading if I decide to kind of change my mind later on. It's essentially adjustment layer and shading is this kind of shading waiting for an image to appear underneath it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it means that whatever I do now, if I change the color of a blazer, if I decide to change it to a tank top or whatever, that shading is just there. Right. Um, cool. So it's going to be something that's going to be quite um, quite good to use. So yeah, this is quite cool. I'm, I'm actually quite happy with it. It's nice kind of orange color for a t-shirt. Again, not what I would have normally done, but I think it kind of works yeah, overall cool. with all the colors. All right. So um, I think that one, I can't remember who that one was from, but um, they will be receiving a prize and we'll get in contact with you um, offline. Um, I'm just checking if there's any other questions for you. So um, one of the questions is, will you have any of your 80s anime style print available on online shop? Yes. Yeah. And while I mention that, during the next week, and the details are, are on the screen in front of you, if you want to create a character in the style um, that um, Jeremy works in, this very sort of neon 80s Japanese sort of style, if you want to create an image in the next few days, upload it to Behance, um, tag it with the details on online. Um, who, that are on the screen for you, then Jeremy's going to choose a winner out of those and they will win a signed print um, from Jeremy, yeah. which is absolutely awesome. But now, about your prints online. Um, so, yeah, so I've, um, I'm running an online store at the moment. It's got a lot of old work, something that I need to update. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, yeah, a lot of these, a lot of the works that I will be doing personally mm -hmm. will be going up either as pins, stickers, prints, whatever so yeah w watch that space there's a link on my website to my online store at the moment it's a lot of kind of the some of the older work that I've done in the past right. yep. um, my styles kind of evolved quite suddenly from what I used to do so mm -hmm. working in the banding industry I've, I've had a, a lot of kind of you know fingers in the different pies sure. um, and had to kind of adapt my style a lot to different briefs 
And only sort of in the last year or so have I really decided to say, no, I'm going to put all that aside and I'm just going to focus and, and on the things that really make me tick. Yeah. The direction. So that's, that's going to be coming up very soon as well. So if you, if you had, um, if you were starting out now as an illustrator, what piece of advice would you give people? Um, I think one of the things that's really helped me the most is to keep a visual diary, keep a sketchbook. Um, because illustration, I think, is a very demanding mistress, and so is drawing. And it's, it's not like riding a bike where you learn how to do it and then don't do it for like 10, 20 years and mm. then hop on a bike and you're fine. Yep. The, the longer you, you spend go. not doing it, you'll start losing that skill. Yeah, it's like learning a language it. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep doing it. Keep, keep your skills up. Try and draw every day. I'd love to say that I do, but I don't. Um, sometimes you're not feeling it. That's fine too. Other times you're just way too busy. Um, so do you commercial. carry a sketchbook around with you? I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's, we're, we're seeing some of the kind of the, the pages out of my sketchbook there. Right, it's just an cool. A5 kind of moleskin sketchbook um, with just a pen that I like to work with. And again, working with pen and ink is, is almost a little bit refreshing because there's this committal sense that what you do, you, there's no command Z in, right, yes. in my sketchbook. So <laughs> yeah. that, that can be a little bit of a challenge. It adds a little bit of spice to the drawing. And sort of, right. um, but I do generally sort of scan these in and then take them into Photoshop right. to work up. Because I do, I do notice that when you're working in Photoshop, you're, you're very close to the Z yep. key. Yeah, yeah. My, my hand's never too far from the <laughs> keyboard and the, the undo button, which again is, is, is maybe a little bit laborious. Yeah. Um, in terms of process, but it's again, it's it's what I like to do. It's kind of what makes me kind of happy when I'm working on it. And right. if I'm not happy working on something, I, I doesn't make me want to do any more of it. Cool. So I've also got um, Atomican asks. Um, so what hardware you use at home? Is Mac, PC? What 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 what's the um, setup? So I use I use um, the Surface Studio quite a bit. Um, I do also have an iMac and and a Wacom. Uh, Cintiq 13 inch, mm -hmm. um, but I, I tend to use this one a lot more simply because it's you know 28 inches of real estate is you, you can't go up, great, you can't sure. go over it. So, um, but also there's this idea for me that like this really does feel very akin to the analog process. I can sort of you know stretch working my hand out. I'm not sort of constricted yeah. working on something. So there's something really nice, and then it kind of reclines quite nicely. It, it turns into a real sort of artist table. Um, with the power of Photoshop behind it as well. So, yeah, definitely probably this more than anything else at the moment. Right. Okay. Um, and I think, oh, okay, one, <laughs> again, Atomic and asking, um, what music genre do you most enjoy listening <laughs> to when illustrating? And are you a fan of Synthwave? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I've got a playlist of Synthwave that's like 800 songs long. Um, a lot of 80s music. Right, and yeah. a lot of synthwave, yeah. And then yeah. sometimes I, I, I like I know that this is kind of one of those things. I, I know a few people who do this, but it, it's always a little bit sort of strange at times when I'm doing, the, depending on the illustration, but I will listen to a lot of movie soundtracks as well. Oh, okay. Just to, like sort of if I'm drawing sort of like a video game character, I'll listen to some like Hans Zimmer or something just to really like get me <laughs> get in the mood. It, yeah. it sounds okay. really kind of geeky and nerdy, but yeah, it's just anything to get you where you need to be in, in that zone. And sort of the space that you work in is crucial as well. Having a space that sort of inspires you, that you like working in. Um, I almost always have headphones on when I'm working, just kind of isolate myself in my little illustration bubble and just go to town. Cool. Well, folks, I just wanted to um, say an absolutely huge thank you to Jeremy for joining us today. Could you please join me in thanking him um, in the chat pod? Um, we're just um, going to finish off now, and I'm going to ask you just ask you one more question um, as we go. But please thank Jeremy in the chat pod. There will be another online um, show in, in May and we'll get the dates to you as soon as possible. Thanks very much for joining us today. Hopefully you, you joined in and played. There will also be a recording of today if you want to go back and if there was any bits that you, um, tips and tricks that you um, missed in there. So last questions to you, Jeremy, for today. Two questions to finish off. Favourite feature in Photoshop? Uh, probably the, the hue saturation slider, I think, is, is the one that I use the most. All right, okay. Um, and maybe I might also just throw in the, the smoothing option on the paintbrushes. It's just, it, that's made my life so, so much fun, yeah. And feature or something that's missing that you would absolutely love, what can we fix for you? Um, I'd say being able to 
have a selection that's going to impact a bunch of different layers. So being mm -hmm. able to select layers, make one selection, and then sort of changing a color or deleting pixels, and then have it apply simultaneously to all those layers. Individual yeah, layers. Yeah, okay, I think that okay. that that's probably something that I'd just be like, yes, finally, that's that's good. All right, we'll see we'll see if we can um, work on that for you, <laughs> folks. Um, Jeremy, thank you so much for coming along today. It's been my absolute pleasure. I hope everybody got something out of it. Yeah, that'd it's be been great. really cool, guys. Thanks for joining us, and watch out for next month's show. Thanks. <laughs>